At first, I didn't even want to be a pastor. I was running away. This place was not the way it was. When I came here, there were a lot of activities of murder and theft. I was almost killed, and one missionary was even killed in my very eyes on one Sunday morning. But when the Lord called me to come, I had to come and face the challenge. My name is Marshall Kasongo. I think uh, I've been a pastor for uh, quite a long time. When I came here to do ministry, people began to come and I was doing the preaching. People were flowing in, coming from other churches. It grew the interdominational fellowship. That's how I started. These are people who believe in God, but they don't trust Him. What do I mean by that? I mean, they always believe God is their help, but when they need something, they will not kneel down and ask God for something. They always come to man, to a pastor. They feel a pastor should provide. When I went to Copper Bay Ministerial College, I think it's way back in 2007. My background was Pentecostal. So we misunderstood. And the first course actually was so influential for me, the doctrine of God. Really understanding who God is was in, in Pentecostal. You feel like there's something that you need to do for God to be saved. You have to sacrifice a lot of things. At that time, it's like God was a boss. But now from school, I learned that God actually was a co-worker with me. So that really gives me joy. I think there was a great change in me. And um, even when I was at school, I was still pastoring the church. The truth always is not put into people's life easily. Yeah, it was so tough. But uh, when I looked at the Minister of Christ also, it was also my strength. You know, brother is a way for destruction. Nalo is a way for life. And uh, that gave me the strength to go on. So my strategy was only just to live by example. If the word of God has changed me, let this change be seen outside. What I did was, I just began to preach. And some people began to notice the difference. Okay? They began to see that, well, I was preaching the truth, and uh, they accepted that. But uh, things started falling apart, and others left. And when they left, yes, there are few people that were left with me. Just as it is today, people don't want uh, the truth. They just want people who are doing some kind of false prophecy, giving them false hopes. We have to be very careful on what we are teaching people. Is it God saying what you are saying, or is it you who is saying what you are saying? So if I was saying what God was saying, and people are leaving, then I have no one to, to be judged of. Today, we are experiencing growth and acceptance. People are seeing that we are living by the scripture. And also other people that are left are thinking of coming back. Yeah, and others have come back. I love them so much. I feel excited because it's more like I'm reconciling myself to them. I'm also asking for forgiveness to them because what I used to preach and what I'm preaching now, there's a difference. One of the problems that we have encountered in the church, mostly in our area, is illiteracy. So in our church, so to speak, I don't have people that can express themselves well, or read or work. So we thought the only way we can manage to have people that can read and write well is to provide them with education. We do not just want to give them education, but we also want to give them God in their hearts. It's God first. We tell them about God, and then we teach them 
what they need to learn. We have uh, trained 205 children. As you can see, even part of this church is being used as a classroom. Some children are even turned away because of space. And that burdens me. If you are to go in a, one of the classrooms there, you may shed tears like I do. Your children are still sitting on the floor because there are no desks. So we have to do something. Someone has to pray with us. So pray for me, pray for our church, the school is very, very important for the church and also for the community. All these things we're mentioning, they're just physical things, but what we believe is the transformation of people. We still have need to preach in this area. There's a lot of false prophetism, witch doctors or wizards, and now we have the Muslims. They have cropped into church using the name of the Lord that they are doing God's service. They are taking advantage because we have few men in ministry. So we need men that are fully trained to manage the church. I'm also growing old as you can see. I to be very sad that I leave the church with no one. I know the Lord has someone in his heart. Pray for us. We need your prayers. I know you've been praying for us. We're very grateful. The support that has come from Art Cry has kept me going. I'm very, very excited and encouraged. Please don't stop. Continue praying. And I'll also be praying for you. <laughs>